Welcome to Smoky CNC Woodworks. I'm Brian, and today we're going to do something that's not everybody's favorite, I know. We're going to do a little bit of programming. And so I just had so many requests here recently to just to get them started with Vector and VCarve and Aspire. And so we're going to, I'm just going to do a couple of pretty simple ones today, simply because we're getting ready for another trade show later this month. And I'm just going to do some simple word signs, just something real easy that's not super difficult to program. But if you haven't ever done it, there are some steps that you do need to know. So let's get started. So here we are in Vectric Aspire. Uh, now, for people that are new to this software, don't don't sweat this. Aspire is just the upgraded version of VCar, and it what I'm fixing to do is nothing different than what you'll have on a VCar. This is a uh, Aspire, simply just basically an add-on that allows you to do 3D. So that's just a totally different section here on the program. And so we're just going to hit create a new file. And so up here you see your width, 22, height is 12. I'm not going to go quite that large. I'm going to go 18 width and about 6. So what we're going to do is we're going to, uh, I'm just going to do a simple welcome sign. And uh, that's the kind of stuff it sells great at trade shows. So we're going to make a simple one, and it shows right here thickness is 3 quarters an inch. I'm going to zero my machine at the material surface. Uh, this is your datum position. This basically just shows you where you're going to zero at. I zero in the center every time. Uh, it's usually recommended to do it in the lower left-hand corner. I just prefer the center. So I always, it's easy for me to measure a board and find... I just measure it, you know, end to end, top to bottom. I can find the center, like where that red square is at, and I know where I'm starting every time. So I don't ever have to alter that much out of my way I do things. You can see down here on modeling, uh, you've got selections here. You can do standard, high, or very high. I keep mine on very high. It does slow down the process whenever you're cutting, but it just makes a much crisper cut. I mean, it's just much nicer. Uh, material we're going to be using is oak. So hit OK. So now we have our clean tablet. So up here, if you start working on this and decide that you need this area bigger, this little thing right here by the scissors is your job dimensions. You can click on it. You can go in here at any time and change these numbers. I mean, if I decided, oh no, I need that 24 inches long, I change it, and right there you saw the change. So I really don't. I want 18. And I may change my mind. I may get in the middle of this and decide I need shorter or longer or taller or something. So you see all our vector uh, tools here, our creations. Go right here to this T. And it's just a draw test. So I'm just simply going to type welcome. And then we're going to size it. So I'm going to drag it a little bit. Whoop. Okay, so as you can see there, I mean, this thing's showing that it's only about three inches. So what I'm going to do is just drag up. And the way I did that, so these little boxes are out. I get in the middle one, and I can just stretch the wording a little bit. So I'll just make it a little bit taller. So now then, oh, we're down at the bottom of the board. So with this selected, we're going to click on that. Right here under Transform Objects, on the right side, the Align Selected Objects. Click on that. And you can either do Align to a Selection, which means if you had another box here, you could align to the box. Or up top, it has Align to the Material, which is the entire rectangular surface we have. So the center one right there is 
just right in center. So there it is. So it's centered. So while I'm sitting here looking at this, I'm thinking I actually want that a little bit shorter so I can have a bigger, I like a bigger border around stuff. Okay, so we're going to get out of that. So, I mean, as easy as that, that right there is what I'm after. And so, well, almost what I'm after. I'm going to go back over here to text with that highlighted. And right here where it says Arial Black, I'm going to play around with some different fonts. Uh, I mean, I may want it cursive. I don't want it that cursive. I want it to be stuff I can read. That one's not bad. Um, that gardenia is not bad. So basically, I'm just looking through here, and I'm going to find a font I like. So some of these fonts that I'm looking at here, you may not have on your software. That's because I've downloaded a lot of fonts, just because I have certain ones I like that the machine didn't come with. And you can do that at uh, fonts.com. Uh, trying to think of the other one. There's another big one I go to all the time. The font, D-A-F-O-N-T. You can go there and you can download a lot of free fonts off there. They have some you have to buy. I kind of like that one. Oh, no, I like that one right there. Okay. So, again, I'm going to have to center this because the font gets a little bit different size. I'll hit close on that and center. So this is exactly what I was talking about. This is, uh, because of the font, I'm probably going to end up changing the size of my board. We may stretch this a little bit and just see how I can make it look. That's not bad. There we go. We probably don't need to change it. Okay. So something that simple. So We've got it here, so you're completely pleased with it. And you, you're ready to go cut. So right here, you've got it highlighted. You're going to click up there in the left, if you didn't see what I did. Right up here in the left, right below View, there's a little arrow box. Click it, and this will take you over to the cut side. This is the machine side. You've got all your different tool paths, profile, pocket, V carve. Today we're going to do a V carve. This is the one I use the most. So with this highlighted, with the lettering highlighted, we're going to click V carve. And right up here we're going to set depth. The start depth is going to be zero, 00. That's the surface. Flat depth from down. This is the depth you're going to go in. I'm doing 0.13. That is a common depth I use. I'll sometimes vary that to 0.11 up to 0.14. I usually don't get much deeper than that because really things don't need to be much deeper than that for it to really stand out. The tool we're using is a 90 degree V-bit. Uh, this here is for if you want a clear area. So I'll show you another style of this here in a second and where I use that. All right, vector start points. We're not using any of that stuff for this kind of project right now. We're just going to calculate. So we hit calculate, see it highlights it blue, preview selected, hello, preview selected, there we go. And so there it is, it's done it. And so you go up here to global fill or toolpath fill, and that's what it looks like. So just something that simple. So I'm going to show you a different one. I'm going to close out of this one. I'm not even going to save it. So we're going to create new. I'm going to use the same size board. Hit OK. We're going to hit font. We're going to do welcome again. And we'll just use the same font. I mean, it's not even. So what I'm going to do is just put a box around this. Oh, wow. You may have to shrink it down a touch. Stretch it a little more. I like it how I have it. Gonna center it. There we go. 
Tell you what, we're going to shrink it just a scotch more. And we're going to center it. Okay, that'll give us enough room to put a border around it. So right here, up in your Create Vectors, there's a rectangle. So I'm just going to draw a rectangle around that. Okay. Hit Apply, Close. Okay. So what I was telling you before, we're going to center this on the material, the square, rectangle. Okay, now it's centered. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is we're going to center the welcome to the rectangle. So we're going to click on the welcome, hold down shift, and click on the rectangle. We're going to go right over here, hit align to selection, and center. Mine happened to already be centered, so here I'll mess it up a little. We'll bring mine off over there. So you click welcome, hold down shift, click your border, center, and now we're in the center of our rectangle, and the rectangle is centered in the material. Okay, so once again, we're going to go over here to the tooling side. And so with both of these still selected, I'm going to show you something. It, it does make a cool feature or a cool uh, sign. It just takes a long time to cut. So <clears throat> we're doing a V bit again, 0.13. This time we are going to use a flat area clearance to, uh, tool. So my tool of choice is usually a quarter inch end mill. So you just hit select right there. You go over here and select your tools. You may not have all these bits. I happen to have a quarter inch end mill. If you do not, it's fine. You can do it with a straight V bit. It's just going to take a long time. So we're going to go down here to calculate. Okay, so you can see what it's done. Inside the rectangle that I drew, it is taking away all the material in between it and the letters. So instead of hitting Preview Selected Tool, we're going to hit Preview All Tool Paths. That way we'll get to see the Clearance Tool and the V-Bit. So right there, what I was messing with is the speed. Instead of it just clearing it all at once, you can see kind of what the machine is going to do. And so this is with an end mill. It's cleaning that stuff out. I'm going to go ahead and speed it up just a touch because I'm not real patient. I see this all the time. Speed it up even more because obviously it's going to go through layers because it's taking just a small bite every time. Now it's obviously doing it with a V bit. And see, it made my letters angled. And so when I go up here and want to do global, the background is black, or I mean, I can change that to blue or whatever. But I mean, that too is a very cool sign. Now then, the difference, let's run down here and look at the V-car. The clearance took 16 minutes. So the V-car side of it, to 12. So about 28 minutes to make that sign, to cut that. And now granted, I'm going to have to do sanding and painting and all that, which isn't bad, which I wish I'd have looked at this before I closed out earlier. Okay, so what I'm going to do is run over here and I'm just going to fly through this stuff this time. And I'm going to recreate the first one again real quick since I didn't check the time that it would take. Okay, and the way I'm zooming out there I didn't mention I'm using a mouse and I'm just rolling the wheel. I mean you can use your little pad on your computer but I'm not real proficient at using that thing so I use a mouse. Okay, so we got that highlighted I'm going to do a V cut. We don't want to clear with a flat clearing tool. Just simple V bit. Preview. This is kind of what it looks like when it's doing it. I'm going to go ahead and just, well, speed her all the way up so it gets done fast. 
So now then, 16 minutes, 15 minutes, 49 seconds is what we took. And the way I'm doing that is I'm just letting the uh, pointer hover over the uh, toolpath that I did right down here in the bottom right corner. And so it says right down there, the estimated time is 16 minutes. And so you can go up here to your global field and highlight it in there. So, I mean, that's, it's a pretty simple one. And so this is going to be the same. This next portion here is fixing to be the same for both of the signs. So say I'm completely happy with this. I'm going to put a check mark right there beside it down here by the car. I'm going to close out this screen. Bottom right of all these symbols, save toolpath. So I'm going to right click on it, hit save toolpath. Wherever I'm putting it, I always put it in this file called Flipart. And so we're going to call this Welcome. And so right there, it is, I hit save. It will take it over, it'll save it. And so from that, I download from a file, a library that I have called Toolpath. And I will import it from here. I'll just simply drag and drop it whenever I put a memory stick in here and I'll pull up a similar screen and I'll drag and drop and then I'll be ready to take it out to my computer in the shop and go to work. So guys, hopefully that was helpful. I mean, I, I don't know, I mean, really how else to show you that. And Obviously, if you have any questions, do not hesitate to shoot me a question on the comments, and I'll get with you on email, and I'll try to explain it the best of my ability. But this was a real simple sign, and I showed you, showed you the other side that was basically a pocket cut where your left numbers are raised. It makes an awesome looking sign. And I, I mean, I don't know. <laughs> So, I mean, the other thing that I could have done, okay, we're gonna, again, I'm going to fly through. So, whenever I did the border around the bird while ago, shrink it down. Shrink her just a touch more. Stretch center. Okay. So I drew that border. I can draw a border. Center of the border. Hold down shift on the center wheel. Can I know that? Okay, we're all centered up. So when I went over to the toolpath side, you, know, you can highlight it all and say, I don't want it to be raised like that. I just want the out the border. So I hold down shift and click that outer border. It goes away. So I hit V it. I'll calculate it. I'll preview it. So it's done that. So then I go right up here on my left hand side to 2D view. Click on that. Click off the material and click on that border. Now just the borders outline. You could go around this with a V bit and make a little valley. Generally, when I do it, I go up here to Profile Toolpath, change my depth to 0.13, just as deep as this. And at the moment, I have it on the line. So it's going to do a profile path right on that line. So we'll just go ahead and calculate that. Breathe it. So now I just have a nice border around welcome. That, <coughs> excuse me. That is the other option for that. And you do see me do this with a lot of signs. I like putting a border around it. I don't do the pocket cut as much simply because of time. Uh, the bigger you get, the longer it'll take. I mean, something like this, I just put that profile around it. That profile takes three minutes, 38 seconds. That e car takes 18 minutes. So that whole thing's 21 minutes. So it's just going to be a matter of time for you. If you're, 
I'm not real patient. Stuff that gets to be near an hour, I just get antsy. I just can't stand standing there watching it that long. And I have done things that have been two and three hours long. I wish I was more patient with it, but I just want to see the finished product, and I like to keep busy. So something this small is not going to take me long, and the finishing will be, you know, 10 minutes for me. But it's just things you've got to look at whenever you're doing it. What your finishing process is going to be and how long will it take. So anyway, guys, that's going to be all for the computer stuff today. I'm going to probably let this go later today, hopefully. And we'll do something more challenging next time. So that was it, guys. I mean, nothing real complicated. Uh, as we go along, I'll probably make the each thing I cut a little bit more difficult. I mean, as you can see, there's se there's several ways to do just about everything. I mean, just simple wording. You can swap it up and do it completely different. So. As we go down the road, I'll, I'll get into some deeper stuff, some more of the graphic stuff, but I just thought for today, starting out on something simple would be the easiest thing, just to kind of get you rolling, doing small stuff. So that's going to be it for this one, guys. If you had not done so yet, please subscribe, and I'll see you all next time.